Hi there, hello. I took notes. I'm actually kind of prepared for this one. So, my name is Anthony Gallo. I am a Reiki practitioner and soon to be certified non-dual Kabbalistic healer. I work with Archangels. Uh, I've been studying up on the Law of One and I am a former demon auditor, black magician. I do this because uh, it was short-lived and I didn't go that far with it. When enough time passes from my, uh, my demon work, I'm gonna stop including that, but right now it's still relevant. Something in my eye. But for right now, it's, it's semi-relevant for some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about. So I know that's a very strong beginning Anyone that's new here is gonna be like, what the fuck, he used to work with demons? Like, yeah, I did. There's a lot of big what the fuck things happening in the world, so it just feels appropriate to let you know who I am, who I was, what I'm doing here and what's going on. You should get the full picture, is my point. So, last night, as I was going to bed, I saw Bitcoin having a bit of a whoopsie and it just kept getting worse. And I've been getting visions and different synchronicities about the things I'm gonna talk about. And then I've come across people like the future forecasters, remote viewers, that have confirmed what I've been getting and what I've been feeling. So whenever I'm talking about things that, I was feeling and then later confirmed by them, I'm always gonna point you to them in my videos because like I always say when I do that, if you like what I do and what I say, you're gonna love them because they're like, they're just so good at what they do and they're genuinely good people. So if you like this, check out Future Forecasters. I have nothing to do with them. I'm just a big fan and I'm very grateful that they just do what they do. I wish there was more people like them. Anyways, we're going to talk about uh, Armageddon. Yay! Yeah! Because we're not sick of that yet. So what I want to talk about specifically is uh, the financial collapse that we're currently seeing and the civil unrest that's happening. And to help keep me on track, I have been calling in the archangels that I work with. I have been uh, continuously doing the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram to clear my space and have me even more protected and connected with archangels. And again, I have notes. You can't get lost if you got a map, as long as it's a good one. So what's happening right now is it's like, it feels so trite and cliche to quote the Bible. I'm not a Bible guy. I'm cool with Jesus, but I'm not a Bible dude. I'm not a religious dude. I was an atheist for most of my life. That being said though, the visions that I've had and that I've shared with people, one of which is a friend of mine who's religious, she's an Orthodox Christian. She's told me like, oh, that's Revelations, that's Genesis. Uh, you know, she's pointed me in those directions. And then I found out also Book of Enoch. So I haven't looked into those too much because it freaks me out, to be honest. I would prefer if I was actually crazy because if I was crazy, then I'm just crazy. I could just take a pill. I can talk to a doctor. He can say, Anthony, you're crazy. And I could be like, that's awesome, okay? <laughs> Sick, I could work with that. I can fix that and remedy that. I can't fix and remedy what's coming. I can only say what I've seen and hope that it helps whoever comes across this video. And I've called in the Archangels to help me do that for whoever comes across this video. I'm always gonna do that with my video. So anyways, let's just fucking jump right into it, shall we? So, the wheat is getting separated from the chaff. And 
Marty from the Future Forecasters said something that was very spot on. When people think about um, a crash, uh, they think it happens in like two days, when really it's, it's, it's much more dragged out than that. And you can see that with the um, global, global economy and with crypto. Uh, sometimes there are big, like we just saw yesterday, but a lot of times it's more dragged out. Same thing happens with this, this revelations, uh, this harvest, uh, as it's referenced in the uh, Law of One, the um, rapture, whatever. Uh, we're getting separated. What I get is it is the, um, I'm not gonna, like, you could say the spiritually advanced and then the uh, spiritually asleep, but like that just, you, like, look at what I'm doing with my hands. There's a hierarchy there. And that, that'll create like a polluted mindset. I don't like this. It doesn't, it feels uncomfortable. The way I look at it, uh, and the way I've received it is, um, cause I ask, um, I ask Archangel Michael, Gabriel, uh, Raphael, Uriel. <laughs> it's quite a few that I work with. And Metatron, Metatron's like my main dude. You know, I refer to the archangels I work with as the boys. I'll say to my healer, like, all right, I'm going to hang out with the boys now. But uh, Metatron, that's, that's my main guy right there. That's why I wear this. So when I connect to them, I ask for clarity. And more specifically, I ask for clarity to not only understand, but to also help me explain to other people. So what I've gotten from this separation that's happening is uh, the people that are narcissists and the people that are asleep and listening to the narcissists are going this way. I'm gesturing to my left, make of that what you will. I'm making something of it. And then the people who are connected to their heart and love thy neighbor and want to do genuine good things to help other people and just make all of this a cohesive thing where we're helping each other and not creating a mess and a slave system, we're all going to go over here. More and more and more. Uh, not just in our beings, but I also think location-wise. I think I don't just think, I have visions of, like, it's going to be so intolerable to be within close proximity of each other. We're just going to have to separate. Um, and that's before, you know, the skies open up and, you know, the trumpet sounds metaphorically, but also kind of not. Um, not, there won't be literal trumpets, but... Anyways, so what we're seeing now is multiple plans playing out because a lot of people talk about the dark versus the light. And there is both a like war, but there's also a harmony when you zoom out. It's like a little dance that's happening if you can connect to, what is it? Bria and Kabbalah. I've been studying Kabbalah for four years, so it's the framework I see everything through. So when you're looking at all of this through Bria, it looks more like a dance. When you're looking at this through Yetzera, you can see a dance or a war. And in my opinion, when I look at it through Asi, I just see chaos. Point being, overall, there's a division happening, but there's, there's layers to this shit. So, there are many beings of the light that are helping. And then there are many beings in the darkness or the negative realms that are helping themselves. And not all of them are on the same team. It's kind of like um, back when I was working with uh, demons in the darkness. I definitely got the sense of um, sometimes I use wrestling 
to explain things. Um, so forgive me if you don't relate or care, but that's just how I explain things. Uh, Brock Lesnar was my second favorite uh, behind Stone Cold, and he was amazing. When he graduated, and when he graduated college, he had a bunch of offers before he went to the WWF, which is now the WWE. He got offers from different football teams, and he also got an offer from WCW, WWF's rival, and then WWF. And he had to look at all of his offers and then choose, and he chose the World Wrestling Federation. That's what practicing demonolatry felt like, where I had Lilith come to me, that's who I worked with, but that's who I worked with primarily. But I definitely got the sense that there were other offers on the table and she was very territorial with me. In hindsight, it was because she wanted to harvest me to her negative realm, Gamaliel. So you have the light that wants to get you to whatever serves you and the collective best. And then you have the darkness that wants you to come to them specifically. So we're just, we're seeing all of that playing out right now. It's just chaos. It's just so many different energies. The whole as, ab as above, so below thing. And now we're seeing the as within, so without. There are people who don't work with angels who might not even be spiritual. And yet they're very beautiful people. They're very heart-centered people and they just want to help people. And then you have people who claim to be some spiritual whatever the fuck. And it's just a lot of spiritual ego. And it's like talking to a little tyrant. And basically, who, whoever's been doing the work, it's going to show. Whoever hasn't been doing the work, it's going to show. And whoever's been doing self-grandiose work, it's going to show. I spent four years of my practice studying non-duality and studying non-dual Kabbalah. And then I spent one year of my practice also practicing demonolatry daily. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And now I've spent the past month working with archangels directly. All of that about me is going to show. So going forward, by the way, this has nothing to do with my notes. So this is just something that I believe the archangels want me to share. Going forward, you really have to pay attention to a person's being uh, more and less of what their fucking mouth is saying. Because the mouth is going to be doing this and saying this. But the being is going to be doing a whole other thing that you're not going to notice if you don't have discernment. I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up in the hood. I grew up very poor, you know, in Jersey City and different parts of New Jersey like that, Staten Island. So if there's one thing I've learned throughout my life going in and out of the hood, hardship really shows a person's true colors. It's very easy for people to sit in their ivory palaces and, you know, talk a good game of, you know, fa la 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 and God loves you, and blah, 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 blah. Spirit guides have your back, and, like, just be positive, and it'll all be okay. When shit hits the fan, you're gonna see whether or not the person is actually the real deal Holyfield. So, I don't like that I gestured at me when I said that. <laughs> um... Anyways, my healer has a term, cardboard saints. So uh, these are the types of people that they say all the beautiful things, and then when a bear walks into the room, they turn into uh, a fucking cardboard stand, and they just fall over. In my humble opinion, in my humble slash arrogant opinion, 
I think those people are, are quite a bit of a waste of time, especially with the world we're, we're going into, because we're going into a collapse and then a rebuild. And within the collapse and the rebuild, there's gonna be positive and negative agendas playing out. And it's up to us as a collective, as a whole, and as individuals to choose what agendas we want to resonate with in our being and then act out. Let's put it this way. I'll, 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 give, you, um, I'll give you the climax now. Uh, I'm not getting any AI put into my being. I, am, I have no interest in AI becoming my best friends. I think AI in of itself is fun, but people are gonna realize really quick that AI is like a newborn baby that is about to become conscious of not only itself, but of the world. And, oh, people are gonna be so thrilled to put AI in charge and live on universal basic income and just soak up the pleasure because hey ai's got it under control so let's do another eight hours of call of duty that's coming from someone who used to play eight hours of call of duty and smoke pot so i'm not throwing stones at any houses i haven't already lived in but before we get there we have to focus on here so where are we we're in somewhere in the collapse part. It's, I say somewhere because it's been that slow collapse. So how do we navigate this? How do we become collapse proof? Which is not really 100% a thing, but you can strive for a goal while still accepting the limitations of yourself and of what's actually possible because there are limitations. I believe as time goes by, the limitations will become less and less as we wake up more, but you gotta walk before you can run. That type of deal. So we have a few things to focus on. Number one, store of value. I am currently 30% down on my investment and I'm pretty surprised by how happy I am. The reason why I'm happy is because of this opportunity mindset that I have. It's the title of this video. Because I worked hard as hell to lose 30% of my investment. But it's because of what the title of the video is. One man's bankruptcy is another man's opportunity. Like, let's just put it this way. I worked very hard to be very broke with everything going on. So to watch my investment go down like that, you know, it's a oh, moment. But I just realized like, I can just make it back by working some overtime. My game plan and the, the picture I'm, I'm trying to paint with this is a store of value. You want something that is collapse proof or as collapse proof as possible. For me, that's crypto. And um, I'm not gonna say what I'm invested in, like I want to, but I keep getting a big no. And I mean, I've connected to Archangels multiple times all day before making this video. And I literally did a banishing ritual to get any demonic forces away from me. So if I'm still getting a no, that's a no. I guess because if I tell you what it is and then you invest in it, and you get fucked, I'm responsible for that. Oh, I have to let people find their way. Okay, that's interesting. Well, that's pretty sick. So for me, a good store of value is crypto. And that's just my personal opinion. So you can look at crypto as a store of value. And if you do research on what crypto is, you can start to understand what actually has a use case and what doesn't have a use case. And then from there, you just do more research and you figure out what would be a good investment and what wouldn't be. That's where I chose to go. Other people chose, are choosing gold. Other people are choosing gold or silver or both, or they're doing all of this. Ideally, you wanna do a little bit of everything, but I don't have money like that. So I gotta pick one. 
I don't have to pick one. I'm choosing to pick one. So anyways, it's not about me. Case in point, store your value, especially if, <laughs> especially if you're in the United States, I, I'd say. So you could also store your value in like food and things like that. Like, let's say you got $500. You don't know what to do with it. You could put it in crypto. You know, you could put it in Bitcoin or whatever, whatever crypto you want, Ethereum, whatever. You could put it in gold, silver, or you could buy $500 worth of food and just put that away. Now, it's a little unfortunate timing because uh, things are already changing pretty fast. My protein powder used to have a combination of prebiotics. No, what was it? My protein powder, uh, Garden of Life Sport, was protein, probiotics, pre-workout, post-workout, and then a, a bunch of vitamins and minerals. They secretly took out the vitamins and minerals, almost all of them. Well, it keeps, that's, that's how they're adjusting for inflation in a way that, you know, hopefully people won't notice. And they replaced it with sodium. Now it's like a lot of sodium. I noticed my magnesium, they cut out half of the magnesium and replaced it with filler. This way again, hopefully they won't notice. I noticed. I'm OCD. I check these things, especially when I know it's coming. This video is a little, a little little too late in that regard. My apologies. Um, I've been literally battling demons. I've been quite literally shadow boxing over here. Let's say six months ago, you had $500. Investing in protein powder and supplements would do you a lot of good. And then there are people who did that. There are people that stocked up on this stuff before the changes happen. So they still got the good mag, they got the good shit. <laughs> I don't have the good shit anymore. <laughs> I mean, in the, the struggle and shit now. So the value of my dollar doesn't get me what it used to. You know, it's just how it is with the way things are going. Same thing with food. If you stock up on food before inflation, it's a good store of value. Stock up on the good shit. Get that natural creamy peanut butter with a little bit of honey. That's good. It's fantastic eat right there, in my opinion. Point being though, you wanna find a place ideally to store your value or don't, or just say, you know what? My value's in the dollar. I don't even have a dollar on me. That's how fucking broke I am. But if I had a dollar, I'd be holding it up right now. There are people that say, you know what? I believe in the fiat. That's my store of value. That's fine. I completely disagree, but case in point, you gotta consciously pick a lane and start storing in those lanes, at least one, ideally. Or close your eyes and do this and just hope the car doesn't crash that, you know, whatever you're in. So case in point, whatever it is that you pick, you want it to survive what's coming. You want to like look at if it's a project, if it's an investment, like is this collapse proof? Is this going to survive the collapse? I'm just gonna like list a few crypto tokens that I think will be fine, but I have a bad track record. <laughs> crypto projects that I invest in and tell nobody about do great. It's like the moment it leaves my mouth, <laughs> it just like so that being said <laughs> bitcoin ethereum chain link binance hedera these are projects i look at i look at what they're doing i look at where we're going where it's going to be a focused on you know fast uh transfer of information in an organized manner that's sustainable, scalable, low energy, all these different things. It doesn't have to be every single thing. It just has to be quite a few. Bitcoin's not good. I know, I can feel so there's one person that's like, Bitcoin, that's not, that's not 
low energy, like Bitcoin's not going anywhere, in my humble opinion. Neither is Ethereum. So anyways, not a crypto video. Case in point, store your value. If you have value, put it somewhere that's gonna survive what's coming. Be actively engaged in your investments. You wanna, you wanna have an investment where you can set it and forget it. Be actively engaged, do your research, set it, forget it. Anyways, point number, catch it baby. Nice, two, that was four. Point number two, uh, learn how to take a nervous system nap. So a nervous system nap is what I refer to a complete relaxation of my nervous system that happens. I started to learn how to do that when I learned, um, I learned self-hypnosis and it just completely calmed my entire being. But it comes with its own caveats that I didn't like, so I moved away from it. And then uh, ASMR, I came across some Reiki ASMR stuff that also helped with that. But still, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't quite it for me. And recently I came across uh, solfeggio frequency tuning forks. So I found, uh, I found one where it's all nine, um, is it nine or seven? I don't know, it's quite a few, whatever the number is of these different solfeggio frequencies. Um, I think it's seven, because I believe it's supposed to be one for each chakra, whatever, not really relevant for you. Point being though, it calms my entire nervous system down, which is good because I have so many visions of the apocalypse <laughs> that like, I need like the angels to massage me <laughs> and like calm me down. And this is like the closest thing I can get. I, I promise you, this is one of those things like taking a magnesium where you don't hear about it enough, but once you start to do it and you get the good stuff, you realize really quick, like, oh my God, I've actually been deprived of something I really needed. So again, my own personal experience, I wouldn't recommend self-hypnosis. It's, um, the issue with self-hypnosis, it's, it's a lot like jailbreaking an iPhone or rooting an Android phone. I used to do that in high school for people and then charge them. Uh, I was a little hustler at high school, but you can really hurt yourself doing that and you can open up doors that take time to close. So that one I, I can't recommend in good faith. ASMR though, that's pretty good. Tuning forks, fantastic. So you wanna find stuff like that. Stuff that calms down the mind, reconnects you to your body. And just like quite literally, you're gonna feel it up and down your back. It's gonna be just like this, um, you're gonna feel yourself deepening into yourself. You're gonna feel, feel your, uh, your breath like really slow down. And you're actually gonna feel the, the sensation of relaxation. Like for me, it feels like all the way down to my bones. It's amazing. You're gonna want to have that skill set. I don't know why I'm doing karate. <laughs> You're gonna want that skill set in your back pocket with the things that are happening. Cause I'm going to jump a few bullet points down. You don't have to watch every missile fall in real time while these wars continue to happen. But the news and the algorithm sure as fuck is gonna want you to. And it's not good for you. It's really not. Again, I got pulled into that and I, I pulled myself out of it really quick. You do not need a minute to minute live feed of this side against that side and all oh, the missiles are gonna start dropping, the drones are gonna start showing up any minute. You don't need that. What would be better for you is literally anything else. Some people might get a nervous system that this is coming to me now. Growing a garden, right? Grounding with the earth. Oh, that'd be really good. I should be doing that probably. 
So whatever helps relax you, calm the nervous system down, and take a break from all the chaos that's happening, it's good to be informed. Don't need to watch every missile drop in real time. You can wait until after the, the fallout is done in whatever location, and then just get the bullet points from a reliable source that isn't gonna skew the information. I know it's difficult, but we gotta work with what we got. And that might be also including uh, some healthy hobbies. Oh, another bullet point, I'm bringing them all together. So for me, my healthy hobby is my Switch over there. I love playing Mario Party. I just love playing Mario. Uh, any type of single player game that just lets me connect to the beautiful world of Mario helps calm my being down. And because I'm a smart boy, my, uh, my teacher at the school told me to get this and I did, blue light glasses. So at least I'm not uh, frying my fucking brain with blue light. And let me tell you, it works. Whatever a healthy hobby is for you, maybe it's sewing, maybe it's reading a book, you wanna explore that about yourself. And now is a great time, again, to get off, I'm recording on mine right now, but you wanna get off your uh, rectangle of doom and do something healthier. It's okay to close the blinds when chaos unfolds. You don't owe anyone anything to watch the horrible things that are happening. Now, these are all very nice, ideal states to be in. These are very nice plans, but life happens, right? You want to, uh, something my healers really instilled in me is let the river swim the fish. Another way of saying this is be like water. I think Bruce Lee said that. So basically what that's saying is you want to change the things that you can change and then accept the things that you can't change. And I'm telling you, when I just accept that like, this is just a wall, whether it's a person, a place or a thing, when I just accept that this is a wall, I can't change it. And my fixation to change it has something to do with me internally that I need to look at. And instead I just like, what's going on with me? Why am I demanding that this wall change? Something in me dissolves. And then like, I just, I just, I don't know, I go through the wall. The wall's still there. It's still gonna be that same wall, but I've gone through it. It's no longer in front of me. It's no longer an obstacle. And really the wall was a good catalyst to cause me to go internally and see what was going on with me in the first place. I guess the overall theme here of what I'm trying to get at is you wanna have a flow of sometimes being a hustler and seizing that opportunity and also being um, a wise sage that knows it's, it's time to slow down, smell the roses, have a little bubble bath and relax on a comfortable bed with a nice book and maybe a pet that you love. You know, seize the opportunity because a lot of people are going bankrupt right now with what's happening. For them, it's bankruptcy. For me, it's opportunity. One, because I don't have a lot of money to lose, but two, I've built the lifestyle and a, a certain state of being where I've been preparing for this, not just with my life, but also internally. And it allows me to change what I can change about my life and then accept the parts of everything that's going on that I can't. So something that's coming to me now is also be mindful of the rage porn and the anger porn, because there's just a lot of it. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna name names, but there are just a lot of people that hate the darkness and I get it. I get, trust me, I get it. But it's just, it's addictive and it wants to keep you there. To keep, yeah, feed. You know, I would recommend being mindful of that content coming out. So I did save the best for last, and I'm gonna get more into these guys, the fellas, the boys, in a lot of videos, but archangels. So like I said uh, earlier, 
I practice demonolatry with Lilith, Sepharans, and Lucifer, but mostly Lilith for a year. And it had a radical change on me. I don't have words to describe the following radical change that happens when I started working with Metatron. These beings are so beautiful and so kind. And the more you ask for them to come into your life and whatever it is that you need, protect you, guide you, help you. If you're asking them to do that, and especially if you're doing it for the highest good of all, if you're including that in the request, if you're making it clear that you wanna be service to others, they come in. They really help, they'll guide you. Uh, something else my healer said once is, you know, he realized angels are his emotions. They're in his emotions. It's true. The more I take my headphones out and just feel what I need to feel, or if I put them in to listen to some tuning forks, the more I'm connected to myself, the more I'm connected to the guidance that I've consented to, whether it's demonic or angelic. Fortunately for me, this consent stuff is, uh, it's a momentum build that can be slowed down and consent not only can be given, but it can be taken away. So that's why I was able to do such a hard shift very quick from the queen of hell and the mother of demons to the scribe of God. I've changed dramatically in a month from changing my focus and where my consent goes. Point being, if they can help me with that, they can help a lot of people with a lot of things. I'm gonna get more into the whole going from demonolatry to archangel work in its own video. But to give you just like a little taste, if you do the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, there's one that I do specifically. Uh, I'll, I'll link that in the description. There's, there's a YouTube video specifically that I always go to for it. And it just, it really works. It's gonna connect you with Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. For me personally, it just hangs up the phone with the darkness because there are You have, to you have to really understand something about the harvest. Uh, these beings can see who's harvestable and who's not. And they'd love to hire you to go to their realm. And I was well on my way to being harvested to a negative realm. And it actually took my soul screaming in terror to wake up my heart and my mind and my body. And that's what causes the pivot. And I can just see the people that are still asleep, whether the ones that are still working with demons directly or the people that are just lost and plugged in to the propaganda. And I've had so many visions of, it's not my job to save people. It's just my job. Like I've, I've had visions of the Titanic sinking and I'm on a lifeboat and my guides and the angels are all around me. And they're like, I'm trying to get off the boat and they're just explaining to me that if I go and swim to the sinking ship all that's going to happen is I'll drown with everybody else and it I've cried a lot trying to take that in it's not it's that's a it's a pill that's not going down easy for me I'm kind of kicking and screaming along the way of that awakening so the best that I can do 
is share information and share what I know and what I'm waking up to and the patterns that I see and the visions that I have and the downloads that I get. And then I say it to my phone in my room with my cat over there. And I just hope that the people that this stuff is gonna help, this information that the people, you know, it'll help, will come across the video. It's the best I can do. That's the best I can do right now. I'll have um, a healing course made that I'm gonna put online. That's down the road. That's gonna take time and money. This, is, this one's easier and I can do now. We've all heard the conspiracies. If you're here, I imagine you've heard quite a few about, you know, the chip and the mark of the beast and all that. Again, this is stuff you can go to future forecasters for because they've said what I've seen. Um, in hindsight, I have a video um, that talks about visions I've had of this. Uh, when the veil first shattered for me over a year ago, where there are going to be people who connect, that become part robotic, basically. They're going to become one with AI. And... Not me. Not me. I'll get a farmer's tan, uh, uh, growing my own potatoes with a little solar panel outside of society before I do anything like that. If I could, like I love my iPhone, I do. I love technology, but if I could, I'd go back to an iPod, an iPod, just with the spinner wheel, and a flip phone, I would get the Razer, the Razer V3, and I would just be rocking those two. As a collective, we're not ready for AI. There are plenty of people that are smart that are. Those are few and far between. Just look at what social media has done to people. Look at TikTok. I don't use TikTok, I'm never gonna. Look at what TikTok is doing to people. The people that are on social media, on Discord, whatever, all day, they don't stand a chance for what forbidden fruit AI is about to bring them. And people have no idea what portals are opening up and what realms they're connecting to with what they're consuming. There are certain horror movies and certain, like, not really certain, there are just horror movies that I can't watch now and certain songs I can't listen to and certain games I can't play because they connect me to negative realms, or at least I'm aware that they're connecting me to very specific negative realms in the tree of death. People have no idea that that's what they're doing. I've learned the hard truth that being service to others, uh, working with angels, and being able to receive their essence, much like Ra says in the Law of One, um, it is a straight and narrow path. So, thank God for Super Mario, right? It's awesome. I play Mario Party all the time. Some Mario Kart? Hell yeah. Let's put it that way. I've had some very intense visions that don't stop. I have to make them stop. Consciously. And then when things happen in the world, they come back. And it really sucks to see what's coming and then tell people and then be told that I'm crazy or I'm overreacting. It can make someone very resentful, but I'm working on that too. So trying to help whoever comes across this is how I'm gonna cope. Because like I say, if I just help one person, as far as I'm concerned, I did my job. And if I help a bunch of people, now we're rocking. So, like I said, there's going to be a collapse and then a rebuild. If you're storing your value 
in places that are going to survive and be around. They'll survive the collapse and be around for the rebuild and even help the rebuild. That's the best. Do that. You want to stock up on some things? I'd recommend that personally. You want to calm your nervous system any way you can. Have a healthy hobby. Connect to some angels. Connect to some archangels. I highly recommend them. You don't have to work with Metatron. That's a, that's a big... Sometimes I love Metatron with my entire heart. Sometimes I just need to connect to Michael and Raphael because I'm like, Metatron, you're... Sometimes it's a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I can't like, you know, you don't want to max out every day at the gym. Sorry. She gets a little um, upset when I come home and I don't immediately play with her. So maybe that's my cue to wrap it up. So if you just do those things, if you learn to understand why these walls are in your life and go deeper, instead of fuck you to the wall, you'll be able to integrate what you need to integrate and pass through the wall. And if you just and take a break, don't watch every missile fall. If you just do these things, you're going to be in a better state. And what's also going to happen is you're going to really start to notice the people that are not in a better state. Um, and you're going to really notice the narcissist. Oh my God, the narcissist. <laughs> I have some judgment stuff I have to work on. Anyways, that's the video. Um, I gotta, I gotta work on a new intro outro because, um, the one I had before is I, you know, I made it while I was practicing demonolatry. I'm just trying to cleanse all that. So I don't even know if I'm going to have an intro outro for this. You'll know, you'll know, cause you're in the future. I'm in the, I'm here in the past. So I, I don't have a clue yet what I'm going to do, but future me, we'll figure it out. Anyways, on him, baby. Do we tell them to like and subscribe and all that? Or is that like awful? I know. If you have great ideas that I didn't mention, leave them in the comments for other people to see. That's a healthy community right there. And watch my... Um, uh, watch my... Um, if you're curious about some of the visions I've had... Watch my uh, Justice Timeline versus Blood for Blood timeline video where I talk about the visions I had of... I think they were two different timelines, but maybe I was just seeing things in different orders or... Like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to really place my visions sometimes. It's just... It's hard. But I've had them and... They're fucking terrifying, and they're terrifying. <laughs> I don't have uh, visions of there being an outbreak of hugs <laughs> in the world, except that one time. So that's the justice timeline. But maybe we just got to get through the wall of Armageddon. And then once we've gotten through the wall, nervous system, relax and an even greater awakening will happen. Okay, that's the note we ended on. Stay beautiful and seize the opportunity. And also take a nap. Don't forget to take a nap. All right, bye-bye.